hey what's up everyone so in this video i'll be showing you how to process payment using stripe react and node.js and we'll be making use of our simple online shop here and i have already showed you how to create this online shop with complete uh, shopping cart and also authentication on this particular series on my youtube channel so i'll leave a link to this particular series at the description section below so that you can check it out but if you wish to only focus on processing payment then i'll also provide um, the source code for this particular online shop up to where uh, we have reached and this is how this online shop works so right here we have the cart right now it's empty so i can start shopping and i can add an item to cart so i can continue shopping right here and i can add another item to cart i can be able to add the quantity for a particular item right here and it will calculate the subtotal automatically i can also decrease the quantity and i can as well remove an item from cart also right here we have a button to clear the cart but i don't want to create right now so right here i'll add a few products let me add two of them and this is the subtotal and now before we check out we have to log in first so right here i'll click on login to check out and we are taken to the login page so if you don't have an account you can register so i'll come to login and i'll go ahead and use an already registered email right here so chao at gmail.com and if i try to log in without password then password is not allowed to be empty we have some basic validation that is happening on the back end password length must be at least six characters strong so i'll enter the value password right here which is this one i'll copy that and paste it here and I'll go ahead and log in. Submitting. And now that we are logged in, we can go ahead and check out. So before I check out, I can come to uh, the payments here at Stripe dashboard. And when I refresh, you'll notice that we don't have any payments. Okay. So if I refresh, uh, just to make sure that we don't have uh, any payments. So no test payments. So I'm in test mode actually. So right here. When I click on checkout, it will create what we call a payment intent. So checkout and this will be processed by Stripe. Uh, and uh, here we go. So it's loading the checkout page. And now you'll see that we have a summary of our items right here with the amount right there. Very clear. And then right here we can enter the shipping address. We can enter the shipping method and then we can use the card to pay okay and then we pay but now when we click the checkout button it created what we call a payment intent so when we refresh right here you will see that we have a record of the payment that is not complete yet okay so right here we have incomplete payment because we haven't paid it yet so this is just a payment intent like we want to pay for something so right here let's go ahead and enter the details right here the email I'll go ahead and enter the shipping address. So I'll use a random address. This is just for test the location. And then right here, the phone number in case we want to call you uh, for the order. And then right here, you can like uh, click on next day. And then right here, it will recalculate the, uh, the total. So it has added some amount there. And now right here, I'll use a test card. So 42424242424242. Four two, four two, four two, four two, four two, four two. This is provided by a stripe. Any future date, 3333. Three, three, three. Uh, any number for CVC, 3333. Three, three. This is for uh, the test. And then before I pay, you'll notice that at our database orders, we don't have anything. So we'll also be making a record of the order at our database, just not only on Stripe, okay? So that we can be able to fetch it from the database and show the user their order or also show the admin the order so that they can make changes whether it's delivered or not. So right here, I'll go ahead and click on pay. Close that, it's processing. Once it's done, it will redirect us to a checkout success. Cut is cleared and you can see checkout successful. So this is very awesome. And now when I come to payments here and refresh, now you'll see that the payment is complete, which is really awesome. So it's uh, refreshing right there and the payment succeeded. And when I click on this, you see the customer email there is Chow Charles right here. 
then payment started and succeeded at that time down here we have the shipping information and then down here we have the items that we are supposed to ship so you as an admin you can actually like just use these details right here but if you wish to show the user the delivery status and so on uh, we keep a record at our database as well so when i refresh this you'll see that now at the orders we have a record as well of that uh, particular payment so we have the user id who paid the products we are keeping the id and the quantity for each product so we have two products right there the subtotal and the totals right there then we have the shipping information so we can also show these to the user or the admin which is a really awesome delivery status is pending payment status is paid and in a future video i'll show you how to create the admin dashboard the user profile also how to create a product from an admin dashboard and so on so if you are interested in this kind of content please make sure you subscribe to the channel and also turn on post notification so another cool thing is that i have given you access to the starter files the starter files includes the complete shopping cart and authentication that is login plus register and you can download using this button right here download starter files i'll leave a link to this page at the description section below okay and if you wish to learn how to do all these creating a complete shopping cart and adding authentication then you can click on this link which will take you to the complete playlist and i'll also leave a link to the playlist at the description section below now another thing is that i have included access to the source codes right here the source codes includes the complete shopping cart now authentication and whatever we will cover in this video that is stripe payment and in future this will be updating okay i'll be updating these source codes um to include the admin dashboard to include user profile to include uh processing orders and so on and so forth so that now it's like the complete uh, e-commerce react and node um web app and i have also given you access to the uh, github link right here if you wish to view this from github okay so this is a nice page that i created um for me to have everything right here and i'll leave a link at the description section below so once you click on this uh, download starter files you will get a zipped file all you need to do is to unzip that file and then you will get a folder that folder will have both the back end and the front end okay and then from there you need to install the dependencies so to install the dependencies all you need to do is to create a new terminal right here then it will open down here you will cd into backend and then you will run npm i and then you will hit enter uh, for you to install those dependencies and then once they are installed to run the backend you'll use nodemon you hit enter that will run the backend now for the front end you'll cd into front end so First of all, I'll get out of backend, then CD into front end. From here, you run npmi to install front end dependencies. To start the front end, you run npm start. So I have already done that, and that is this is where my backend is running, and then this is where my front end is running. And this is the application right here without checkout. Like when I click checkout, it doesn't do anything. We just have authentication and the complete shopping cart so in this video i want us to process the payment uh, of our products right here now another thing is that uh, your backend might not uh, like uh, start correctly it might give you an issue because you need to include an environment variable for your mongodb database so i'm assuming you know how to set up mongodb and work with node.js so i think i have left an example a dot .env file which you can follow but basically if it's not there your dot .env file should look like this db uri you include the url there you include your jwt secret key right there so that everything works fine so once you do that it's a time to move on to stripe so to move on to stripe uh, actually i'll come right here open a new tab and you can search for stripe uh, checkout and you can follow the documentation actually so we built checkout so that you don't have to stripe makes this very easy for us we already have an existing checkout page from stripe which we can make use of and then customize it pass data to it and uh yeah 
be able to do stuff. So right here, I'll just go to explore the docs. I want to explore the docs with you so that you see how you can like go about it and uh, also learn to explore the docs as well. <laughs> now, right here, we are at uh, Stripe Checkout. Once I scroll down here, you'll see we have different ways of like uh, using Stripe. You can accept a payment like what we will be doing in this video. You can also like create a subscription. This is like a monthly subscription thing. Now, in this case, we are accepting a payment. So I'll go with accept a payment. Once I click that, now we have web, iOS, Android, you can choose any. I'll go with web. We have a pre-built checkout page, which is which complexity is just like very easy to use. And it will look like this, but it's possible to customize the logos, the images and the colors. And if you want to have a custom uh, checkout page, you can go with uh, the custom payment flow. I won't check on that, but you can definitely uh, make your own checkout page instead of using this pre-built checkout page okay now for this pre-built checkout page is so easy and the first thing that we need to do is to install stripe so on your back end make sure you are at node uh, not unless you are using any other back end you will just run npm i and then stripe so all you need to do is to copy that command and then make sure you are at the back end so from here i can see the like that to go one step backward and then cd into backend and from here now you can install stripe at the backend okay that is node okay once you install that uh, you are ready to move on to the next step and uh, this is the front end part of it so for the front end we'll only be having a button with an on click event calling a backend endpoint a backend api so we don't need to worry about this for now but I can scroll down here to this code, okay? And this is the backend code that we need. So what I'll do from here, this node code, I'll copy this post uh, endpoint right here. And then we will explore it together. So what I'll do, I'll copy this post endpoint. I'll copy that and I'll come right here. And at the backend here, I'll go to routes. And then I'll create a new file. I'll call it a stripe.js and I'll paste that code right here. Okay. And from here, I have already installed Stripe, so I don't need to hit enter for my case. So from here, I'll just minimize this and then uh, let's explore what we have here. So we have a post request to this endpoint. We have our async function right here with request and response. And then right here, we have session. And this session is coming from um, uh, stripe.checkout.session. And then we are creating a checkout session. So this checkout session accepts several uh, stuff. Uh, that is a key and value pair. It accepts line items. So you can think of these line items as our cut items. So this is like just an array of our items. And we will explore it together. And then right here we have the mode which can be payment or subscription and then right here we have the success url and the cancer url now for the success url is when when the payment is successful where should the checkout page take us to and then for the cancel is once you like cancel or place back where should the a stripe checkout page take you to so we will customize all this so this is basically it this is basically it you call this endpoint on the front end and then it will like process the payment how easy is that very easy so let's customize this and make it to be our own now the first thing that we need to do is to import stripe and as you can see we will import stripe and also we need to pass the um i think the security key from the stripe dashboard okay so what i'll do at the top first of all i'll create a router for this so i'll import express so i'll say const express to be equal to require express uh, express and then i'll bring in stripe so i'll say const stripe will be equal to require and then i'll bring in stripe so make sure you already like installed this one and then we need to um make use of the security key so for the security key down here 
I'll just say const stripe will be equal to I call this stripe right here. Note the this starts with a small letter, this starts with a capital. So I'll say stripe and then I'll invoke it and I should pass the security key from stripe right here. So I read this key from the environment variable. So I'll say process.env and then I'll give it a name of stripe underscore key. Okay? Now let's get this key. So I'll copy this stripe key, copy that, open the .env file and then I'll paste it here. And I'll set this key to be uh, you need to create a Stripe account and then go to the dashboard. Once you create the account, you'll be redirected to the dashboard. Go to developers and then you can see the keys. I think somewhere here uh, they are not listed, but you can come to API keys right here. And then the secret key, reveal the key and then copy. This is just a test key. This is test mode. Okay. Now from here, I'll paste that key right here from uh, the Stripe dashboard and I'll save. So now this way we have like configured it, but uh, it might bring some issue. We need to configure the .env package. So just at the top, before you do this, at the top of it, you need to require and then I'll bring in .env and at the end here I'll say .config so that we can be able to actually read that key from the .env file, okay? So with this, this is awesome. Another thing is that um, we need to make use of router instead of app. So I'll create a router here. I'll say const router will be equal to express dot router and I'll invoke that. Now instead of saying app.post, I'll say router dot post and then we'll have that we create a session um these stripe dot checkout dot session dot create we line our items for now i'll leave it at these and then we have the mode is payment now for the success url we will create um some routes on the front end for us to handle the success and also to handle the fail so what i'll do i'll cancel or I remove this one and I'll use backticks because I want to read the base URL which is from the environment variable. So we will have process dot env and then dot client underscore URL and then we will have a route called stroke checkout uh, hyphen success. And then I'll just like copy this one. And for the cancer URL, I'll paste this one. So we'll have process.env. And then now right here, instead of uh, checkout success, I will have cut. So if someone cancels the checkout process, they are redirected back to the cut, okay? Yeah. And then now for this one, you see the way we have res.redirect this one. So this is when you make use of a form on the front end. So right here, you see they made use of a form to call that uh, endpoint. But for us, we will be using just a, a button which will have an on-click event. So instead of using this res.redirect, we should make use of res and then um, dot send. And right here, we will send an object which will have our URL. So I'll say URL and then full colon and we'll make use of this session. So I'll say session and it will have a property called URL. Okay, cool. Now down here, I need to export our router so that we configure it and be able to access it from the front end. So I'll say module and then dot exports and then this will be equal to router now with this i can be able to come right here and i can bring in our router so i can say const stripe 
will be equal to we require stroke router and then stroke stripe and then we configure it right here so app.use i'll duplicate that and i'll set to be api stroke stripe and then right here instead of login we will have stripe okay i'll save now um, with this backend we will come back to it and actually pass our cut items but for now we need uh, something simple to work with and then we can customize it further as we move on for now i want us to go to the front end we call this endpoint also we set up the checkout success for our front end yeah so what i'll do i will just go to front end i'll go to src components i'll create a new file and i'll call it pay button pay button and then dot uh, jsx now from this pay button we will be importing several stuff first of all we will need axios to make the http request so this will come from axios and then second of all we will need to know the currently logged in user so i'll bring in the use selector hook so use selector so this is from react redux so react redux so right here it's a semicolon that's why i'm not getting the suggestions and then um another thing i'll bring in the base url uh, so right here we will have url from um this will come from strice stroke api and this url is for our backend okay this is for our backend simply the http localhost 5000 now right here i'll go ahead and create a status functional component and i'll call it pay button and in here uh, for the return what we will simply have is a button so i'll have a button and i'll say check out and for this button we'll have the on click event so i'll say on click and we will call a function right here called handle handle checkout that is handle check out and i invoke it okay so we don't have this function let's go ahead and create it so right here i'll have const handle checkout handle check out this will be an arrow function and we should be able to do something in here and what we will be doing is performing the http request okay so first of all we need to hook up this component pay button to our cart right here so i'll go to the cart and then where we have checkout so i'll use control f search for check out so right here where we have this button i will replace this with this particular a pay button okay so right here i'll just remove that and then i'll include our pay button right here pay button i'll click on it to auto import it at the top and another thing that we should do we should also uh, pass our cut items to this particular pay button okay so right here i'll say cut items will be equal to our cut items are available in cut and then dot cut items so we pass these cut items as a plop to our pay button okay so that we can be able to actually pass them to the back end so i'll come to be to the pay button so we can be able to accept those cut items as plops here cut items okay pretty awesome and from here we can be able maybe let's rock them to the console so i can say console.rog of cut items first so that when we click this button we should log the cut items to the console uh, yeah 
let's test this implementation first before we proceed so i'll come to the front end and let's make sure we refresh let's open the console i'll go to the console now when i click checkout we are getting our cart items right here which is this iphone 12 okay so that is working so another thing uh, before we proceed to checking out we should create our checkout success page so or route so at our front end let me minimize the back end at our front end at the components i'll create another file and i'll call it check out uh, success and then dot gsx and then from these i'll just create a status functional component and i'll call it checkout success let me use the small caps there and or we will return right here is a h2 and we will say uh, check out success check out success okay yeah cool now i'll go to index.js and we need to create a route for that actually not index but app.js so we need to create a path for that and from here after the cut i can actually like duplicate that and then now instead of stroke cut i'll say stroke check out hyphen success and this is exactly what we have right here okay so they should be the same and then now at the element instead of loading the cut we will load the check out success i click on this to auto import it another thing is that this not found is not actually working in version 6 so what i should do is that uh, i should remove this one the last one here and at the path i'll include any path that is not this one so all the path that are not this one will take you to the not found page so i'll save that and i can actually like test it so right here i can go to checkout success so checkout success should show checkout success and if we try to access a path that does not exist then we get 404 page not found cool so the, the routing is working now and we can proceed with the pay button so at this particular uh, function i'll now make use of axios so i'll say axios and then dot post we should include the backend url so i'll use backticks and i'll read our url right here and then after that we will have stroke stripe and then stroke uh, create hyphen checkout hyphen session okay so this is now our endpoint which is rockerhost 5000 stroke api stroke stripe stroke create checkout session so once that is called this is the first parameter actually now the second parameter um we can pass now our cut items and also we can pass the user so i'll pass an object and right here i'll pass the cut items comma also i want the user and we'll get the user from the use select uh, hook right here so right here i can load the user i can say const user will be equal to the use uh, select a hook i invoke it we'll have access to the state and we can actually return state dot auth so from there we will get our user and we can be able to pass uh, just the user id is the most important so i'll pass the user id to be user dot underscore id so this user id is important when you want to create an order so that that order is associated with the currently logged in user so i hope that makes sense actually it does so axios dot post and then after this so this will return a promise so we can tap the dot then method we will have a response so res 
and from this response uh, we can perform a check so if our res dot um, data has the URL if res dot data dot URL if we have that URL then let us um, push the user to the to the checkout page to that URL so what I can make use of is the window object right here and then I'll say dot location dot href and I'll set this to be equal to these res dot data dot url and what this will do is that it will take us to the checkout page okay else if this fails if we have an error that is we can catch the error right here and we get the error okay we get the error right here and we can like log the error to the console so i'll just say console dot log of error dot message And I'll save and then uh, once we complete the payment successfully then stripe will take us to this page once we cancel the process it will take us to the cart let's test this out and see if we can get that checkout URL okay okay cool I'll come back right here go to online shop go to right here and click on checkout click and we don't get anything uh, what we get it's an error so post um connection refused so our backend has an issue so let's open the backend right here and go to it it has an error actually yes let's see what the error is so i'll scroll right here and return okay invalid url undefined checkout success okay cool i know what the issue is we didn't include the client url at the .env file so i'll go to the .env file and we should include the client url so i'll paste here and our client url is http full colon double stroke then localhost um full colon 3000 that is our base URL for the client because we are on localhost. Once you deploy, you should change this to the actual URL. So I'll save that. Then let's see if it's running here. Actually, it's not. So I'll come back to Stripe page. It doesn't detect changes on .env file. So I'll save this again to restart. Server running, then Mongo successful. So I'll go here and click on checkout let's wait and see yeah it's taking us to the stripe checkout and now look we are able to see this data right here t-shirt and we have a process a way of like performing the payment and this is awesome because it's done automatically by stripe so as you can see the product name is t-shirt the amount is 2000 so this is in cents so you can divide this by 100 to get it in dollars so 20 dollars so that is what we have t-shirt twenty dollars now these line items we can include more data right here like the images the description and so on and so forth and all those data will appear here and then another cool thing with stripe is that it will automatically calculate the totals okay so this is the amount this is the quantity so if i change this quantity let's say to two and let's duplicate this particular item right here and let's say the name is uh, i don't know phone and let's have one of these one so it will automatically calculate the totals for this is 200 uh, times 2 400 uh, that is 4000 and then this one is 2000 6000 that is 60 dollars the total is 60 dollars so when i save and come uh, right here so this is why we needed the cancel and the success so when i cancel we should go back to uh, that is the cut when i click checkout again you'll see that it will calculate the totals for us so let's see what we have there we go it's 60 dollars phone one quantity 20 then this is 40 it's automatically getting the totals and we don't need to worry about that so let's actually perform this payment i can just come here and include the email 
This is 4242422. This is the test card. You can check it on Stripe. Uh, and then right here, any future date and any CVC. And then the name on card. And then right here, you can select location. And then I pay. Once, once I pay, we should go back to our uh, app where we have like uh, the payment is successful. The checkout is successful. So I'll pay. It's processing. And we are making a payment of 60 here. It's processing. And check. So once it's successful, we go to the checkout success. And once we go to payments now, you'll see that the payment was actually successful. It's that easy. It's that easy to like set up a payment with Stripe. And now look, we have this success right here, which is $60, okay? And once we open this one and come down here, um, you will see $60 and we have t-shirt phone and all the data is here you can like now like deliver to the customer and so on now the thing is we need to include our cart items right here okay so to do that we are receiving that in request from our front end so you see at the front end let me cancel some of these pages i'll cancel that that i'll remove the cart index so that we only remain with these two so this is our front end right here, pay button. We are able to pass to our back end, the cart items and the user ID. And now from here, we can be able to include them to our rain items right here. So this is an array and we can use the map method for us to follow this particular format, okay? So let's do that. Let's uh, create a new uh, array of items that we will use as our line items and it will have all our cut items from the front end after this before we even create the session i'll just say let const line items line items uh, be equal to request dot body and then dot cut items remember we are receiving them in the request body dot map and then once we map, we will get an item at a time. And we can be able to return these right here as an object. And what we should include is this price data up to this point. I'll copy that and I'll paste it here. Now, this object right here will be added to our line items uh, with each iteration. And we should now like customize it to contain our card items, okay? So first things first, currency, USD, product uh, data. The name now right here will be item.name, item.name. And then we can include more properties, okay? We can have images. So this accepts an array of images, I think up to four links also. So we already have a link, an array of uh, these will be item dot image so this is the link to our image i'll include a comma we can include a description so description and full colon and we should have item dot desk and lastly i'll include metadata and we can include whatever we want right here so i'll say id to be item dot id and then the amount here now this will be item dot price item dot price but remember we should multiply this by a hundred so that we make it in cents and then the quantity will be item dot cut quantity so item dot cut um cut quantity so these are properties that are available in our item. Just like that. I'll save. And now these line items will contain all our cut items. And now instead of passing uh, these line items like this, I can just remove it like that and pass these line items. So I'll say line 
underscore items like that okay and now these are our cut items from the front end which is really awesome so let's test that one out i'll save and hopefully everything will work out i'll go to the cut we have one item let's add more i'll add galaxy s i'll increase the cut quantity for this one so that we have this one and i'll check out once i check out we should be redirected to the page i think it's not working we have an issue so let me inspect and see um we have an issue i think it's on the back end so failed to connect let's check our back end right here let's see the error um received unknown parameter line items zero uh, price data images so i think we have an issue right here name should be item dot name images should be an array so this should be in small it's just like the eye <laughs> pretty pretty crazy i'll save this and let's see if it's working there we go let's click checkout and see if we will get the checkout page and there we go so it's working and then let's bring this here and look we have our items from the front end iphone 12 the quantity is 2 galaxy s the quantity is 1 we have the description light here 5 inches 6 inches and it's calculating the totals for us and all we need to do is to go ahead and check out how amazing is that pretty nice now the next thing that i want us to do is that we should be able to like include shipping information okay and that is the the address and also we can like correct the phone number and so on so to do that uh, what you need to do is you can explore the docs again once you scroll down here you can see after the payment i guess it was somewhere here i'm not sure okay once you scroll at the very bottom of this documentation you'll see you can add discounts you can add um, ids shipping you can customize your branding and so on so what i want is to add shipping so you can be able to add shipping right here and this is what you need to do you need to include uh, shipping options so shipping options is when you set uh, should it come like how many days will it take to ship and also um, can will you pay for shipping or not uh, things like that you see fixed amount zero that is free shipping and then right here amount you can include next day air that amount so we have the documentation for this just before the line items i can just like actually copy this one also right here you can specify the countries that you want usa uh, canada etc so i can just like copy all this okay it's available in the documentation and um, I don't want to keep typing it. I'll copy all this. Before the line items, I'll copy that. And um, I can include it just before our line items. Okay. So when creating the session just before here, I can paste all that right there. And this is what we have. You specify the payment method, its card. You specify the countries. So maybe I can add my own country, which is KE, Kenya, for Kenya. And then right here we have shipping shipping options, whether you provide free shipping or all these are optional. Actually, it's not a must you include them or you provide like next day air. I just want to show you that they are there so that you can make use of them. And another thing that you can include is a phone number. So a phone number in case you want to, I think you can include so i'll just go one step back and uh, at the very bottom i think we have an option for phone uh, add discount correct tax so it's not listed but it's there so for the phone number for you to add the phone number you need to include this line uh, i can say phone uh, underscore number and then uh, underscore collections 
full colon and we'll say enabled to be true and then now down here i can include a comma and now that will also have like a phone number for us to correct so once i save that and once i come to the payment page um, right here i'll cancel that and let me check out again once i click check out uh, it should process but i think it's bringing an error let's see what the error is this is an error with our back end we obviously like missed something so let's see uh, received a known parameter phone number corrections maybe i missed a spelling so we shouldn't have an s i'll save it's just typos sorry so let's see what we have i'll come back click checkout again uh, it's reading the checkout page and uh, here we go so now from here you'll see that we have now this part where we can correct the address the uh, phone number city and so on so that you can like actually deliver uh, that product to uh, um, th that particular address i think this is very important okay and let's now test this one out let's perform this payment using our test card so i'll include the dummy addresses here uh, real quick and i'll come you can click on next here that will recalculate this one automatically you include the test card here and then you include any future date you include any cvc and then you pay and this will process once it's successful it should take us to the checkout success page and uh, once i come to the payments right here payments uh, you'll see we have this order right here and then i'll come here and let's see if we are correcting the address actually we are and we are successfully like getting now these from our cart which is awesome now another question is that how can you keep a record of these in your database okay because you need a record of this in your database maybe you can fetch it from the database show it to admin show it to the currently logged in user and so on so stripe have what we call uh web hooks okay so if i click payments here or come to the developers we have web hooks so i will show you how to create an order in the next video i think this video is wrong enough i have showed you how to process payment so if you you wish to know how to create an order and save it to your database using web hooks then uh, make sure you subscribe turn on post notification so that you get notified once i upload another thing that you should notice that here we have incomplete payments and these incomplete payments are formed when the moment you click checkout right here the moment you like click checkout uh, this creates what we call a payment intent so we want to like perform a payment okay so right here when i come it has already created an incomplete payment for that so uh, you see it has this incomplete payment and once we go ahead and pay it will mark it as succeeded but once we cancel once we cancel it will remain to be there okay it will remain to be there and once we click checkout again it will create another payment intent so for some reason it's not reusing the same payment intent and that is why you are seeing this incomplete incomplete but there is a way of getting this payment intent from stripe and reusing it okay you can like reuse the same payment intent so that it don't have to create new ones uh, whenever you try to check out okay otherwise that is the end of this video and in the next video i'll show you how to create an order using stripe webhooks and save the payment information the addresses the cart information on your own database so that as an admin you can mark the order as complete delivered or not delivered and so on and so forth and also the client your user can actually see it on their profile so i'll see you on the next one